good singing tonight, choir. Take your hymnal tonight. Turn to page 243. I love to tell the story. Let's all stand together tonight. Sing I love to tell the story 243 in your church hymnal. remain standing now as our pastor comes. I'm going to ask Brother Ron Thomas if you will lead us in prayer. Bless your Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, Lord, and thanking you for this opportunity to come together with brothers and sisters in Christ and to worship you, Lord. I pray that you will bless everyone that's come out, Lord, if there's one some lost, burdened, troubled, Lord, may they leave it at the altar tonight, that's right. Lord. I, Amen. I thank you for the rain and for the sunshine, Lord, and I pray that You'll just lead, guide, and direct us forward, Lord, into this uh, special time of the year that's coming up. Lord, and may we never uh, forget the truly reason of, of Christmas. That's right. Lord, and uh, may we, as the song says, I love to tell the story. We tell it one day in glory, but we need to be telling it more here while we're here, Lord. That we right. tell it to someone that don't know. And Father, I pray that you'll just give us a Holy Spirit filled time in the Lord, and we'll say thank you. We'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me get my microphone on here. Amen. Good to see you in the house of God on this rainy night. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate if you're visiting with us. If for the first time, if you lift your hand, the ushers will bring you a card, fill it out, and drop it in the offering bag. Now, uh, Master Club's downstairs. Pray for those, for the workers and the children. And then Sunday school, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Everybody plan to be in Sunday school. Our Christmas service will be Friday the 23rd at 7 o'clock. 
Now, the parish, the parish is going to be here January the 22nd on a Sunday night at 6.30 in the evening service. And we're looking forward to that. Tell your friends about it. And then we want to pray especially tonight for Brother Jack Roberts and his family. His sister, Sybil Coker, went home to be with the Lord. And the, uh, they'll be receiving friends Friday from 10 until 11. And the service is from 11 until 12 at the Gray Mortuary in Pelzer, South Carolina. And then let me call a uh, conference for just a moment and read you a financial report. Total paid out 50. Sign the itemized report is on the board in the foyer. Now, we have a, a report of a family that has been burned out. The family lost everything, and so we have a list on the board out there and on the table, and you can go by and get the sizes if you'd like to donate, and you can bring anything. They lost everything, so they have no Christmas. They have children, and, of course, you can look at those and find out that full information on the board. But you bring all items and place them in the lobby by next Wednesday night. By next Wednesday night, out here in the lobby, and help them out if you can. Ushers, you come if you will. We'll receive the offering for the uh, tie, uh, the sign, uh, or the uh, or air condition. I believe now. I believe we've about got enough for our sign, and we'll be giving you a report pretty soon on that. I have an anonymous gift here for a thousand dollars to go in tonight. That'll be put in. Brother Danny Burton, would you lead us in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your house again thank tonight. You. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for a place like this we can come and worship you. Just thank you, Lord, for this choir and Sammy Jr. Just be with them tonight and all the special singers be with the preacher tonight as he breaks the bread of life. Just give us what we stand in need of. Lord, we want to pray for that prayer list that the preacher spoke about a while ago, Lord, you know each and every need on that list. Just fill them according to thy will. Bless this offering. We'll be careful to praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen.
didn't get any better than that. That's good singing. We appreciate it from the depths of our heart. If you will, take your Bible and turn to Psalm 86 tonight. Psalm 86. This is on page 641. 641 in the Old Scofield Bible. Uh, Psalm 86. Verse number 1. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and, and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy with all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. I want to stop right there, and I want to talk a little bit tonight about our attitude about praying. Now, you know, uh, traditionally, Wednesday night is known as prayer meeting night. Now, it doesn't matter what day you want to call it that. Every day ought to be a prayer meeting day, and we do pray every day. But you know that we really recognize prayer on Wednesday night. We usually read our prayer list to the congregation and let them know those that are on the prayer list that are in a great need, and we ask you to pray for them. Now, as we've said many, many times, prayer is a subject that is far-reaching, and many great books have been written about prayer, and I have enjoyed reading many of these books, great authors that gave their testimony concerning prayer, how God had answered their prayers, and it encouraged me to keep on praying when at times I didn't feel much like going on with my prayer life. Now, that is the flesh getting in the way trying to hinder us from not carrying on. But no true Christian refuses to engage in prayer at some time or another. Every born-again child of God feels their need to pray, and we pray. <clears throat> we may not all pray the same length of time. We may not all pray at the same time, but we all pray. And it's not really the amount of words we say, but it's how we pray from the heart. It's not the position of the body as much as it, as it is the soul. And so the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, God said, availeth much. Now, God would never say that if prayer was not important. If it wasn't important, he would never say it. It availeth much because much is accomplished through prayer. The thing about it is Christians need to learn to pray. And then they need to learn a little bit about how to pray. And I think we're going to learn that right here tonight because I got charged up in my study yesterday reading this psalm and just looking through these verses that I've just read. Why should we believe in prayer? Do we believe that God really hears? Like the wicked last Sunday said, does God really know? Is there knowledge in heaven of what's going on down here? And does God really know what we feel and what we do? Well, the answer is God knows. I'll tell you that right now. He knows all about every one of us tonight. Now, I want to tell you, I believe we see it right here in these few verses that I've read, how that we ought to pray, and I believe that we can expect from God. First of all, we plead humbly. In verse number one, he said, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Now, he's not speaking of his lack of material possessions right here but a spirit of humility. Uh, God loveth a, a broken and a contrite heart, and God dwelleth with that. God looks at those that are humble before him. And if we come proud and we think we're somebody that we are not, if we think more highly of ourselves than we ought, that's wrong, and God can't bless that. But when we humbly come before God and admit that we are nothing within ourselves, and Lord, I can't do it without you, and we are coming to God with that humility, then God is ready to answer prayer. So he no doubt faced many problems, the psalmist did, in his life. And of course, he realized that he couldn't do it on his own. He couldn't handle everything by himself. So we all recognize that tonight. We all feel that in our very soul. So we are at moments, we are full of dread. 
We're full of fear sometimes, but the psalmist said, what time I'm afraid, I'll trust in thee. So it may be a spiritual problem that you may be having maybe tonight. It may be a physical problem. It may be a financial problem. But we seek the Lord anyway. We seek the Lord. We call upon Him in prayer. And we are expecting now that God is going to hear and answer that prayer. We wouldn't pray if we didn't expect God to hear and answer prayer. Now, we're not alone in this battle. Down through the generations, people have had these same problems that you and I face from day to day. Now, God gave these psalms right here. Brother Ron and I were talking about it in the prayer room a while ago. God gave us these psalms for our day, for any day, for every day, for everybody. Lord, brother, these uh, psalms will lift you up and bless your heart and stir you like you've never been stirred before if you'll get along somewhere and begin to meditate on them. Now, we plead humbly, but not only that, but we testify sincerely. Look at verse 2. Preserve my soul, for I am holy, O thou my God. Save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Psalm 37, 28. For he heard, and, and uh, the Bible tells, him, uh, tells us that he is asking God, that, and God telling him that he does not forsake his saints. They're preserved forever. And so preserve uh, my soul, he said, for I am holy. Now, this word holy carries the connotation of chaste, pure, pure in heart. A man that is pure in heart shall see God. And the Bible teaches this. We need to be pure. We need to be mature. We need to be, uh, be virtuous. We need to get rid of sin in our life and not carry on sin in our life. Now, this means one who is the subject of God's loving kindness. God's loving kindness is shown toward every born-again child of God that can testify like this psalmist just testified. This is a sincere testimony. I mean, really agreeing with prayer. And I'm here to tell you tonight, I've been saved a long time, and I'm still convinced that prayer is worth having. Where it is worthy of our notice and our consideration and our action. We need to get started praying and develop a habit of praying. I tell you, it'll be the greatest, one of the greatest experiences you've ever had. Now, the reason I say that is because the Bible teaches that, but I've also experienced a little of it myself. The older I get, the more I enjoy talking to God. <laughs> I'm getting closer and closer to seeing Him face to face. And brother, when you're on your knees praying and you're thinking about it won't be long, and I'm going to see this God. I'm going to see him face to face in reality. Then, brother, it'll start turning your spiritual motor on. I'm telling you, James 4, 2, the Bible says, You have not because you ask not. Then he said, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Now, amiss means out of place or in error. And we can expect our prayers to be answered because we're praying in the Spirit, we're asking in faith, believing, and, in, uh, and we plead humbly, we testify sincerely. My testimony is not a faith, it's not a put on. I'm saved by grace. I'm not bragging on being good. I'm bragging on Jesus who saved a wretch like me. I'm talking about our great Savior. I believe Him with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my soul. And then another thing we see here, we trust intensely in verse number 2. Save thy servant that trusted in thee. In Isaiah 26, 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. So we must really trust the Lord if we're going to get prayers <coughs> answered, if we expect this. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, now these are some of the greatest verses in the Old Testament that, uh, that you could ever read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In Psalm 23, 3, the psalmist said, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me where? In the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We've got a leader. God leads us. He guides us. He teaches us. He fellowships with us. And he who guides provides. 
and God just blesses this church. How I many he keeps on blessing this church? This church has been through a lot down through the years. I've been through a lot. My wife's been through a lot. You've been through a lot. But God still got us together. God still got a testimony on the side of this road. Praise God. This church represents Jesus Christ. It's his. Belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. So he who makes and made you and me what we are and who we are, we belong to him. We walk by faith and not by sight. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And over in Hebrews 11, 6, another familiar verse of Scripture, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we pray, we plead humbly. We testify sincerely. We trust intensely. And then we persist strongly. Verse 3, Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee till I get tired or till I just figure you're not hearing me. Is that what it said? No, he said, Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Every day that I live, I'm calling upon God. Do you do that? We ought to all be calling upon God in sincerity every single day that we live. I don't tell you how often you ought to do that. I know that Daniel had a real set time three times a day. He prayed in particular on his knees to God and thanked him, but he probably prayed many other times during the day. But he had three set times that he really got down to business with God and prayed and talked to God and thanked him. Listen, we ought to have a set time, maybe not three times a day, maybe ten times a day. It doesn't matter. But we need to be as serious about praying as Daniel was, really making it a part of our life. Daniel didn't do that to show off. He did that. That was part of his life. That was Daniel's life from the young man that he started out as and right on up to his death. So we are hindered sometimes in our prayer time. Oh, the devil hates it. Adverse circumstances hinder us. The devil, no doubt, tries to hinder us when we try to pray. And the, the flesh is so weak. I remember I used to, when I was a young man and I'd just gotten saved, I'd hear a preacher preach, if you ever prayed all night long. And I'd say, well, no, I've never prayed all night long. And he would say, sometimes they'd say, well, you're not right with God if you can't pray all night long. Well, that's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. But I thought he knew what he was talking about. So I tried praying all night long several times, and I'd wake up 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, on my knees asleep. I'd wake up asleep. I couldn't make it. And I got to thinking, well, if I'm not right with God, my goodness. And I was young, ignorant, didn't know. But I got to study this old book, brother. Jesus said, you're not heard for your much speaking. We're heard from a, a sincere heart. And, and I could pray. It'd be better to pray in the Spirit five minutes than to pray all night long just saying words. And I learned that. Now, I don't listen to that kind of stuff. I don't listen to that. You can't pray all night. I mean, if you can, that's fine. Nothing wrong with it if you can do it. But I challenge anybody to do it and tell me the truth about it. And tell me you stayed awake, wide awake, praying all night long. Tell me if it happens. And I'll try it again. But... The flesh is weak, and the flesh will let you down. Doubts, doubts enter in sometimes. We start not doubting God's power, not God's reality, but we start doubting ourselves. Am I really right? Am I really doing this thing right? And am I studying right? Am I learning right? And then people hinder us. Sometimes people interfere with your prayer life. But through it all, through it all, we persist in praying. We are determined to let nothing or nobody hinder us or keep us from talking to our Heavenly Father. Now, we may be hindered, but we're not defeated. We keep on praying. Prayer leads to communion, and this is where I'm driving at. Listen, prayer is not just request. I believe I said this the other day. Not just request, not just petitions, but is a communion with God, fellowshipping with God, John said, truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And he went on and he said, these things write unto you that your joy may be full. 
and your joy can be full when you fellowship with the Lord and commune with the Lord. Boy, your joy gets so great, and then you wonder why people say hallelujah and praise the Lord. And you're sitting there, I don't feel anything. Bless God, get in communion with God and see if you don't change your mind. You'll change it in a hurry if you'll just get in communion with the Lord. So we insist. Another thing we see right here, we insist earnestly. Look at verse 4. Rejoice the soul, rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Now when we are in true prayer, we are lifting up our soul to God. And I'll give you a good illustration of that. In the Old Testament, when Hannah, you know, women back then without children were reproached. And rather, she wanted a child, not so that the reproach would be removed, but she wanted a child to give to God. She wanted a son that would, she could give to God. He would serve God and become a great worker for God. So Hannah went to prayer. I mean, she was not uh, having any children. She was barren. Well, she had nothing was helping, but she said, I'm going to go to God in prayer. So she went to the Lord in prayer, and she prayed earnestly for a son, that God would give her a son, and she would lend him back to God. Well, oh, Eli, he saw her praying, and her lips were moving, but there was no sound coming out her, of her lips. But she was just... And oh, Eli said, she's drunk. She's drunk. He accused her of being drunk, and he approached her about that situation. Here's what she said in 1 Samuel 1, 15. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. I've just poured out my soul before the Lord. I may have acted strange to you. It may have looked funny or strange because of the way I prayed, and I don't know uh, all that went on there in that prayer meeting, but brother, she was pouring out her soul unto the Lord. Have you ever just fallen down to pray and just cry out to God, Lord, help me. Lord, do this for me. Lord, I need your help. I need your guidance. Brother, I'll tell you, I've done it a many a time, just pouring out my soul to the Lord. And even though Eli could not hear Hannah when she prayed, God could. She wasn't praying to Eli. She was praying to God. We're not praying to any man. We don't approach any pope or any preacher and say, you know, answer my prayer. Popes and preachers and priests and all the rest of them can't answer one prayer. But I know one who can. I know the one that can answer your prayer. I know the one that will answer prayer. And brother, he'll answer his way the best way and according to his will. And you say, well, I knew you'd put that according to his will. Well, look, if you're out of God's will, you're not getting through anyway. You've got to be in God's will to even start talking to God. And that's not hard to do now. That's not something that you have to twist and, and strain at and pull at and all that. Just yield yourself totally to him and pour out your soul to him. I was looking, I was telling Ron a while ago, I guess I'll preach on this, where the psalmist said, uh, uh, God said that, you know, you have set your love on me. You have set your love on me. And then God gives a list of things he does for people that do that. I told Ron, I said, boy, I told God today, Lord, right here and now, fresh and anew, I'm setting my love on you. I'm going to love you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, better than anything in the world. I'm going to love you better than anybody in the world. I'm setting my love on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I did that today. And, brother, listen, I'm going to get those benefits that God promised. I'm going to preach on that so the rest of us can enjoy it. I got turned off. I tell you, these things have gotten me excited. I'm excited about what we have in our God, and we ought to enjoy every one of them. So this shows now another thing, that uh, God does hear prayer if it's silent. It can be audible. It can be out loud. And it doesn't matter if you scream to the top of your voice to God. That's okay, but you cannot say one thing audibly just praying to God with your lips, but you don't have to move your lips. He can hear your prayer from your heart to him. You're his child. You're indwelt by his spirit. He knows all about you, knows everything about you. He knows more about you than you know about yourself. And so listen, your prayer can be heard whether it be silent or whether it be out loud. So this shows true proof of that. And then in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, pray 
Jesus said, to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now this is another blessing I've experienced in thy ministry, is getting alone in, you know, the Bible says go in your closet and shut the door. It doesn't mean just a closed closet. It means any place secluded, any place alone. Go ahead and go somewhere and get alone with God. Just alone. Shut the door. Get everything out of your mind. And then talk to God. And he said, the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And like I said, you can have something on your heart, and you just don't want to talk about it to anybody but God. You go into that closet or that secret place, and you get down and talk to God about it. And you say, now, God, you're the only one I'm going to tell this, but I need this. I need it badly. And then you go about your business. You don't tell your wife. You don't tell your husband. You don't tell your brother or sister or your kids. Don't tell anybody. See if that prayer comes to pass. And, buddy, when it does, when it does, <laughs> glory, you have the closet again. You, had a, you hunt that secluded place where you can say, Lord, I need this, and I'm just going to tell you about it. I'm not going to tell anybody else about it, just you. And God's the only one that knew about it, and he did it. And so how there, there it is. God heard you pray in secret and rewarded you openly. Now, when we lift up our soul in secret, God hears. And why should we believe in prayer? What should be our attitude about prayer? Well, as we see right here listed in these verses, we plead humbly, we testify sincerely, we trust intensely, we persist strongly, we insist earnestly, but then, I like this one, we extol joyfully, verse 5, for thou, Lord, art good. I could stop right there and hear some amens. Hear some amens from Sammy K. Probably from you. First one, for thou, Lord, art good. I say amen. Hallelujah. He's good. He's a good God. Amen. And then another thing, and ready to forgive. I say, <laughs> woo, glory. Amen. He's willing to forgive right now. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how bad you've been, no matter how backslidden you are, he's ready to forgive right now. Glory. Glory. Amen. Glory. And another thing, that's another amen for me. And then a plenteous, plenteous and plenteous in mercy. I say amen to that. If it hadn't been for the mercy of God withholding all the bad things that could, I could have gotten myself into, I'd probably be so defeated I couldn't move. But God withheld those bad things. He guided me around those things. His mercy was leading me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever, the Bible says. Mercy, mercy, whoo, glory, mercy is my companion from here to glory. And then, my friend, here's another one. Unto all them that, all them, he doesn't exclude any of us. Hey, you know where old Sammy K got in on that good stuff? Hey, that little old good-for-nothing hell-raising sinner. He got saved by the grace of God, got in all that good stuff God provides. Hey, that's my goodness. He didn't exclude me. He said, I'll take him too. I'll take him too. Lord, I know you can take all this, but what about this one? I'll take you too. Whew, glory. And then that call upon him. How many times have we called and God answered? Amen to that. Extol means to praise and to worship. Now, true praying saints, they feel this joy and reverence in prayer like no other time. I like the drums. I like the piano. I like the uh, guitar. I like everything. I like the choir singing. I like the preaching of the word when I hear it. All these things I like. But let me tell you something, my friend. The Bible tells us right here that this praying saint gets something that he doesn't get anywhere else. You'll get it, get something to bless your heart, that nothing else can bless, like that prayer, that sincere prayer. Psalm 30 and verse 1, I will extol thee, O Lord. Extol means praise now. And so he said, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to overcome me. In other words, my enemies tried to get me, Lord. They tried to get me down. 
They tried to get me discouraged. They tried to get me to quit. But, Lord, you didn't let them. You didn't let them defeat me. You kept me in the victory side. Psalm 145, verse 1. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Ron, that was the word I was mentioning to you a while ago. Unsearchable. You can't fathom the greatness of our God. He's greater than any and all. And then the last thing we see in these scriptures, we believe steadfastly. Verse number 7. In the day of my trouble. Oh, you mean we have trouble? That's right. We have trouble. Christians have trouble. They have many troubles. But he said, in the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee. He hasn't stopped praying yet. Whenever you run into trouble, don't stop praying. Go ahead and go back to the altar. Go back to that same praying closet wherever you pray. Keep on praying. Don't give it up. He said, in the day of my trouble, I'll call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Ah, that's positive. Thou wilt answer me. So we are instructed to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord, not in vain. We're living a, and serving a true and living God. Now, what is your attitude tonight about praying? Do you believe in it? Do you believe it's uh, necessary? Do you believe it's advantageous? Do you believe you ought to get you a place to pray every day? Find a place, a spot where you can just get along with God and just relax and call upon Him. And maybe open your Bible to some of these psalms. Read one or two of them. And then talk to God. Say, Lord, this is what you said. And boy, these promises are a lot older than you are. These promises are every one valid. None of his promises are nay. They're all yea. So we can claim his promises. So does God really hear? You know he does. There's proof right here that God hears. So that wicked man that says, does God really hear? Is there really knowledge in heaven about what's... He's a fool. He's a fool. You and I know there's a God in heaven. Daniel said there is a God in heaven. And that Daniel knew that for a fact by experience, and he proved it over and over and over again. Now, how are we to pray to him in these ways that I just mentioned? Read those scriptures again when you get time and claim them for your very own and see God hear and answer your prayer. Let's stand, please, if you will. Bow our heads, and if there's anyone here tonight and you're not saved, then the altar is open. We invite you to come to Jesus and be saved and born again, washed in the blood, and leave this church saved and happy in the Lord. But if you're saved and you haven't been praying like you should, and you know whether you have or not, then why don't you say, I'm going I'm to take the challenge. I think I'm going to take up the habit of praying. I think I'm going to spend a little time alone with God. I believe this church will feel it. I believe you'll feel it through this whole church. When we all get to praying, talking to this God that hears and answers prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you tonight. We feel so unworthy because of our smallness. But Lord, we're not trying to be humble and, and, and fake humble or fake humility. We are not trying to do that. But we earnestly and honestly bow in humility before you, recognizing your greatness, recognizing your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Lord, we've already claimed your mercy, your grace, your love, and your power be manifested in our life every day and in this church and in the life of this church. And I pray that every one of us will join together now 